say definitively that religions are all bullshit. Welcome to Brainstorm. We have the explicit tag for a reason. This is a base level argument to a higher level morality. I get paid to science? To science as much as one can science. What the hell was my point? Trigger warning. The Brainstorm podcast will criticize your most cherished beliefs. We attack nonsense in all its forms and discuss difficult subjects. If you peddle pseudoscience, supernatural woo, or religious dogma, then this is not your safe place. It's the home of the hardcore skepticism. What time is it? It's Packard Folks at Time. Hat? Check. Shirt? Check. Pants? Optional. Mug? Double check. Check us out at cafepress.com slash Packard Pokes at where you can get all this great merchandise and more. Do you like Packard Pokes at and want to hear it on demand and on the go? Download the free app today at stitcher.com. Available on iOS, Android, Nook, and iPad. This is Packard Pokes at and I'm poking at your news. Your news. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another fine edition of Packard Folks at. I am your immutable and unmutable host, Packard Sonic. And joining me tonight from the far west coast is Connie Practical Magic 9. My apologies to the rest of the world that we prayed the rain to go away up here because, <laughs> oh my gosh, it's hot. <laughs> hot, hot, hot. Did you, so you're responsible for sending it all to Texas, huh? <laughs> on Joel Olstein, but that didn't work out. I see. <laughs> so prayer doesn't prayer doesn't work. No prayer doesn't work. <laughs> no. I think he's no he's still no he's in Texas. <laughs> I don't know. I was thinking he was somewhere else. I was thinking of a I, I was thinking of the guy that built the boat. You know, he built it in the wrong state. <laughs> uh, ham. Yes, the ham. Ham with a side of eggs, yeah. Yes, ham and eggs. And joining from the ill that is Illinois is Tom, your friendly neighborhood atheist. That would be me. And joining us also from the ill that is Illinois is Matt, not a believer, 71. How's everybody doing tonight? And now we're going over to the Brainstorm Podcast. <laughs> Thanks, Blackard. Welcome to the Brainstorm Podcast Skeptic Studio, where we do interviews, major topics, and news related to skepticism and atheism. I'm Corey, and my crew tonight are Destin. Hey. And eventually Lisa. <laughs> she will be joining us. Budget cuts. <laughs> yeah. Budget cuts. <laughs> you guys know what that's like down in the South, right? <laughs> With the always amazing Dave. Wait, wait, wait. You get a budget? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. With the always amazing Dave making us sound good. Oh, hey, I just came back. Hey, there you are. <laughs> We're there in Roman is. Empire Studios in the- Regina, Saskatchewan. And today is September 1st, 2017. So this has been a while in the making. This team up, <laughs> yes, several months in the in the making. Actually, <laughs> yeah, that's right. I have the so the most is, important question is... to start with before we get onto the important sure. stuff. How much did it cost you to get the phone number? Uh, pen pineapple apple pen or whatever it is. <laughs> exactly zero dollars. Wow. <laughs> you have to know a guy and I just didn't happen to know a guy but I did know a guy <laughs> <laughs> yes that's our phone that's our amazing phone number at 662-709-PPAP or 709-7727 Pen, pineapple, apple. Call and- <laughs> yes <laughs> So if you want to, you know, leave us a voicemail or something, we'll play it here in the air. No one's called yet, but the number's there. Maybe someday. It could someday happen. Someday someone will call. Yeah, that's right. It could happen. 
Yeah. Well, actually, no, we have had people called. Uh, we had a previous uh, co host on the show, it was Joe Unseen. He's called, but he's always made up scene gestures, always asked me to take my clothes off. So. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Little inside joke. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get to our first story for this evening. You know, I have to give it to the Toronto Police Department up there because mm. they they go to all lengths to capture, get their man, you know, the old Canadian mountain. <laughs> because apparently there was a Canadian smuggler that was coming through customs there and he they caught him on bicycles. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they had to have, run pretty hard. Do you guys not have <laughs> you guys not have cars up there? I'm just wondering. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have them, but why use them? No, <laughs> just horses. Exactly. Don't you guys have chips? Just horses. <laughs> I'm surprised. I'm surprised you guys didn't capture them on a horse. That would have been just as funny. Uh, now, Montreal complete, uh, compl- uh, police commander Meg- Miguel? Hmm. Miguel Miguel Miguel. Thank you, Miguel Elston and K Cat K Cat K Cate Cafone. Sincata. That's easy for you to say, Connie. <laughs> There's Connie with the pronunciation. Nice work. <laughs> yes, yeah, she she keeps she keeps my pronunciations in check. I, I I just fumble it with. I just play with it myself. <laughs> Apparently, these two were set on a park bench, uh, smoke preparing to smoke marijuana at a joint with another man when police approached them and began to question them. They they said they told the officer uh, Ant- Alston said the officers were not satisfied. With the answers after he produced identification that turned out to be a fake driver's license from Maryland. So, yeah, and then they tried to take off and they took off after him on foot and then along a bike path. But officers caught him, arrested him for suspected drug possession, fingerprinted him, and then revealed his identity. Now, the, the, the best part of this article here is the great job in pushing the investigation. They had a feeling he was not who he said he was. Doesn't that always boil down to that with cops? It's like, uh, <laughs> I got a you, feeling. I just had a tingling. His, yeah, his, his horse sense was tingling. <laughs> I, I wish I wish it had been a Mountie on horseback and that the villain had had, a, had the name Snidely with a mustache because my childhood, you know, bucket list would have had another notch in it. <laughs> awesome yes <laughs> that that would have been exactly awesome D- dudley duray died though so oh did he oh uh-huh. <laughs> he lives forever in my heart <laughs> <laughs> please don't let anybody let trump find out that this guy got an got a um fake id down in maryland because <laughs> yeah they're all, fake they're all mexicans yeah don't 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 yeah, don't don't let them know that you caught him on a bicycle. Otherwise, the police department down here will let everybody be on bike then. Not that I would mind all that, Mike. Really? <laughs> well, well, Trump Trump would assume that everybody in Maryland is Mexican then, and that they're all riding stolen bikes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're all bad hombres. Was it? I, I'm trying to think. Was it Maryland or Vermont where they had that governor who says they're all coming up here from Mexico carrying uh, drugs? They got. Muscles the size of cantaloupes because they're carrying drugs across the border. I forget who said that. It's hard to remember because neither one of those states matter. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. You right? I don't live there. I don't care. <laughs> I hear Vermont and I think maple syrup. I guess. So, <laughs> I guess there's that. <laughs> I, I I I was going to ask where was the drugs maple syrup based? I'm just saying. You know. We actually had a huge maple syrup heist up here that was worth millions of dollars. <laughs> yeah, I remember hearing about that. Yeah. I remember hearing about that. That's our crime. We, we covered that here in the show a while back. Yeah. That was yeah. awesome. Yeah, you guys get heroin and mass murders and school shootings. We got people stealing fucking syrup. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? That's a st- some sticky hands. That's a very sticky hands. We should be building a wall. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said it. I said you get, we should have a northern wall just yeah, to keep the cold air out. You know, you guys can keep that shit. I just don't know how we're going to get Mexico to pay for it. 
<laughs> What's that, Connie? No, I said I'm surprised that the Canadians haven't wanted to build a wall between us and them since. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, surprised you guys didn't say Trump's president. We got to build that fucking wall now. Well, instead of a physical wall, we have we have uh, more open socialism and income tax. That keeps yeah, that most of yellow anyway. <laughs> it's efficient. Yeah. <laughs> that keep Trump out for sure. Yeah. Matt and uh, Tom, do you guys haven't said anything? What do you guys think? Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I'm um, not hearing half of this. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. Which half? I think it's pretty funny, actually, that uh, they caught him. You know, the, right, you know, they're riding bicycles and they caught the guy. Uh huh. <clears throat> I mean, obviously, this guy was on a bench. So, oop, I'm hearing an echo. He's on a bench trying to smoke a joint, and he well, he just. Oh, okay. I see. He, he fled on foot, and they caught him on bikes. Yeah, I, I make. Did they? I, did they kill? Like, did they, were they already on their bikes, or did they just like you know say, uh, see somebody on a bike coming by? It's like, hey, let me borrow your bike. I'm going to you know, like they do in the movies, like say, I'm I'm commandeering this vehicle. <laughs> now, we have lots of bike cops. No, the officers were on bikes. Oh, the yeah. officers were on bikes. Okay. Yeah. If you if you think of a of a really dense metropolitan area. With really mm-hmm. aggressive, really, really angry drivers with very small streets where there's not a lot of room. That's Montreal. I used to live there. And <laughs> the only – if somebody takes off in a car, you're not going to catch them in a car. You have to catch them on a, in a bike because you can get between. Like if you guys have been to New York, I'm sure all of you, right, at some point? I, I've driven through New York a couple of times. I've gone to New York at least yeah. once. Or, or some other ma- major metropolitan areas. Um, you have those uh, – those guys riding around on bikes delivering things, the uh, the couriers. Oh, okay. And they're faster than anybody else, right? So that's that's where the bike cops come in. Oh, I see. I see what you're saying there. Uh, it's because the traffic is so bad. Yeah. 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 Okay. I was going to say, I thought maybe your roads were, like, really narrow. Like, uh, like they're going down, like, a, a small corridor, you know. It's like, we can only fit one. We only got one room for one car at a time, eh? <laughs> well, that's funnier. That's only that's only in the winter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now that I believe, <laughs> they hate being on the bikes in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought it was punishment for fat cops. <laughs> <laughs> it be. You gotta it should be. You got to lose twenty pounds. Here's your bike. <laughs> <laughs> You're twenty pounds over. Get on a bicycle. You're that's your that's your new route. Yeah. <laughs> Did you get your audio figured out there, Tom? I guess not. Um, <laughs> I, there's nothing I can figure out. It's just I'm not hearing most of. Hmm. Did you just Did you just want to disconnect, and reconnect? Did you try I'm turning it off and hearing- on again? <laughs> <laughs> unplug it and plug it back in. Plug it in. Plug it in. Plug, unplug. Plug it in. Yeah, so bye. Okay. Well, it's it's got to be one. It's got to be the connection. It's. Yeah, that's probably what it is. Yeah, the hurricane is affecting everything. So. If there's something really disappointing and about and discouraging about this story is how much security do we have? And they keep calling for more, and this this person slipped through. All right. You know, it's like we're all standing in line, you know, like like hamsters through have a trail at, you know, airports and stuff. Yeah. And still these people get through. I'm like, oh, OK. <laughs> you know? I, I don't even know why we have any security between our countries, because it's the single largest border between two countries in the world. And ninety nine percent of it's unguarded. Yeah, there's yeah. there's. I've driven down dirt roads and ended up in North Dakota by accident. <laughs> <laughs> well, my dad grew up in North Dakota, so he would say that would be the only good reason to be there. <laughs> now I have a good reason to move to North Dakota. <laughs> <laughs> it's close to Saskatchewan. 
That's not really a good reason. Yeah. That's <laughs> I like living here because zomb- zombies can't walk in the winter. No, no, no circulation. All right, who yeah. told you? Who told you that was fabrication? <laughs> <laughs> and we're genuinely concerned about that. <laughs> Real concerns. <laughs> Super concerned. <laughs> Now, well, there was this one other part here. They said that they they had they had an offering of a twenty five thousand dollar reward for his capture. Does the cops get that, or if they capture this guy, or <laughs> you know, I don't think so. <laughs> I think they just get a pat on the back and a good job, and then that's it. Good job, there, buddy boy. They might that, get a Timmy's that, card. <laughs> <laughs> that would really nice suck. It would be nice if it went to like a municipal uh, charity or something. You know, like. I don't know, school lunches or something. I don't know. Buy cars oh, for yes. cops. <laughs> Buy <Buying> cars. <laughs> Put my the motorcycles. Little hand, <laughs> hand protectors when it's winter so they can have the gloves. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or, or put new hamsters in their bi- in the back of the bicycle so they, you know, they don't have to pedal so hard. I could just, I could just imagine a, a Canadian version of chips. <laughs> Just with bicycles. <laughs> yeah, with bicycles. <laughs> <laughs> I have this image in my head now of a hamster this is incredibly, extremely buff because it's been... <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> like you like to see a little hamster with a big brrr, muscles. Yes, he's like Arnold. I, I'm I, going to jerple you up. <laughs> I, I'm picturing like a, a Puerto Rican cop in shorts and a toque. <laughs> like, like uh, what's his name from from Chips? I can't remember the the actor's name. Yes. Yeah. Now, now I'm now I'm picturing a hamster in a toque. <laughs> I've seen hamsters as toques. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, There's some interview I didn't need. <laughs> I'm making a note here. Hamster toque. Hamster toque. <laughs> Chips. That's the kind of stuff I would I would write when I was high back in the day. And then I'd look at it the next day and be like, what's a hamster toque chips bike? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what this means. I don't know. You might have unlocked the key to the universe right there. Just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. God. <laughs> okay. Would you you guys want to move on to the next story? Yeah. Sure, why not? Sure. Let's do some I religious think, okay. nutty. We've done everything we can. Sure. Right. I, 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 I will get that sound effect here right now. So I found the button. There it is. Cornerstone. This might be new to some of you. Scripture says that even our righteous deeds are as filthy rags to God. So even the good things that you do. Even things like feeding, feeding the hungry and, and clothing the poor and taking in widows and orphans, as nice as those things are, if not done from the place of obedience to in a relationship with God, are completely worthless and disgusting to God. If you're not daily walking in a place of relationship to God, then the news that we have to bring you is that you're on your way to hell right now. That's right. Mm-hmm. Oh. Highway. So. <laughs> yeah. on a bike so on a bike <laughs> not on a bike <laughs> <laughs> so this story comes from the friendly atheist blog uh and this uh picture of standing cross during hurricane harvey is not uplifting he says so i guess this person was driving down the highway and past a telephone pole or power pole with the the cross beam and decided that it was religious in nature. <laughs> when So they took some pictures and posted it on their Twitter. Well, it's really unusual to see a pole with another pole attached to it <laughs> at a 90 degree never, angle. Yeah, you never see that anywhere else. No. It's just there. <laughs> I just... Like the the amount of delusion <laughs> delusion that a person must be going through. That, I mean, I don't want to downplay what's going on in uh, around Houston and Hurricane Harvey and whatnot, but this person is clearly um, missing something when they yeah, see oh, a telephone uh, pole. A few brain cells, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Or they have some extra stuff like chromosomes. <laughs> <laughs> a few extra chromosomes. What do I do with all these extra chromosomes? <laughs> 
I've got too many. <laughs> you know, you know what this reminds me of is when the tra- when the uh, towers came down, mm-hmm. they found a, a cross beam, and it's like, oh my gosh, it's a cross. It's like, yeah, imagine that a cross beam in a building. It's a miracle with nine rivets in it. <laughs> yeah. It was made just like that for that particular reason. Yeah. I quite like the I, I can't the message that uh the friendly atheist uh comes out with on on in this blog post is that this if this were a god thing, this kind of implies that God cares more about demonstrating the cross than the people who are being hurt and whatnot from this hurricane. Didn't he promise right. not to kill people with floods ever again? I think I think yes, that was an did. important part of. As a, a matter of fact, it doesn't does say that in the Bible. I read that he in the book. Created the rainbow. <laughs> yep. Yeah, because he says because it says so in a book. I can't remember the book. Well, he did. <laughs> he did leave a cross. Left a symbol of death and punishment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So I don't know what else there is to say about that. So it's, um, yeah, it just it. <laughs> There, there is a very interesting uh, part on here. He says it's like the the deadbeat dad who sends his son five bucks on his birthday while ignoring him the rest of the year, right? And I completely <laughs> agree with that. It's yeah. it, it's completely nonsensical. I could save so people you- and make everything better, but I'm going to put a stick in the ground here. Does that mean that the Wichita line man is still on the line? What'd you say, Connie? You, you everybody talked on top of each other. Sorry. Oh no, that's fine. Um, uh, no, I said if it was a cross, then it's a symbol from God. But if it was a telephone pole, does that mean that the Wichita lineman is still on the line? <laughs> yes. No. Yes, it's a divine yes, message from there. the lineman. <laughs> no, right. the late, the, Glenn Campbell is talking to us from beyond the grave. <laughs> <clears throat> the, the, the lineman's on the line. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this this – there's so much woo in this. I mean, the fact is that they acquire that these people are going through. I, I understand that they're they've got a little trauma going on with their brains right now, so they're trying to latch on to whatever is around them to say, "Hey, this is a sign from God." It's it, it's like those people who, uh, you know, their their house burns down, but the, they leave a the Bible untouched. For it leaves the Bible untouched because reasons. Right. You know, and it's like it's open just happens to be open to this one particular page. And so you're going to destroy the house, but you're going to leave the Bible alone. Yeah, that's some miracle, dude. <laughs> yeah. So I guess this this tweet mentioned a Bible verse. This is Matthew eight twenty seven, And it says something about the waves, wind and waves obey him. So th- this is the Bible verse that somehow is relevant to this. Yeah, so that that means that God said the hurricane. Congratulations, you just you just said that your God's a murderer. Thanks, asshole. Right, eh? Yeah. <laughs> there which now in a separate related story, there was uh, uh, some people in Texas were apparently some big names down there. I I don't have the story in front of me at the moment, but I, I remember seeing it earlier this week, uh, where or it was last week. When just before this started, they were praying that the hurricane would go somewhere else. And apparently, <laughs> guess what? Prayer doesn't work. <laughs> it came anyway. They just didn't pray hard enough. Yeah. That's what, uh, yeah, that's what the excuse that they used. And, mm-hmm. um, they must have had some hidden sin. Yeah, some hidden sin. Ah, uh, yeah. That's mysterious right. ways. Mysterious ways, hidden yeah, sin. Yeah, mysterious ways. There's tons mm-hmm. of good excuses. <laughs> our, our atheists here aren't aren't chiming in. Yeah, they're they're, they're having technical difficulties. They're gonna they'll they're gonna be back here in just a minute. All right. So, um, ours is a garden in heaven. <laughs> yeah. Another uh, euphemism people give at funerals. I'm here. Yeah. There you are. Tom had to reconnect. Yeah, Tom. Tom will be back in a minute. <laughs> just i'll just skype him back he'll just just re-add himself back in here in as, as far as the article uh-huh. I, I i can't imagine being sent to cover this crap as as a as a journalist you're know, like the like i know this one was just a, a tweet but sometimes they actually send somebody like 
a newspaper will send you to, to talk to these people. And I, I could just imagine the eye rolls like, all right, tell me again about the sticks. Uh-huh. <laughs> st- st- stick. Yeah, there's a stick. Okay. <laughs> Waves in God. Okay. <laughs> this came from a... Yeah. Uh, okay. It's an, it's on the tweet there where it says, um, let's see here. Uh, yeah, the, the, the person wrote, uh, Crystal hasn't forgotten that, quote, the wind and the waves obey him, unquote, and two exclamation points. And then and the it was bi- retreated 6,500 times. Yeah, six, uh, yeah it was, I got 6,855 times here. Oh, okay. Apparently, it's, I, I've, I got a live link on it, so I can still like it, retweet it, or oh, or comment on it. <laughs> yeah, so, this I is, mean... This is nothing but a, this is nothing but a, a cross beam for a telephone pole. That's what it is. It's a power pole of some sort. Uh-huh. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah, that's all that is. Yeah. It, there's nothing spectacular about it. You see those fucking everywhere. If you zoom in on the picture, you can actually see like the pieces sticking up that would be on holding the wires above the um, actual wood. <laughs> so, yep. But keep, keep in mind, these are also yeah. people that that uh, believe and follow some two th- two thousand year old dude's imaginary friend. So, yeah, whatever. Yeah. yeah. It, it's well, quick. Go ahead. Critical thinking is discouraged, really. Yeah. <clears throat> Unless it proves what you already believe. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it, I, I've seen this. I, I'm on a lot of Google Hangouts uh, chat rooms, and I see stuff like this all the time, actually. They, they post something that's completely innocuous. And then they just like, oh, well, this sunset was made by God. It's like, no, the sunset just happens to look that way because, you know, the way it's coming through the atmosphere at that exact moment. Or the clouds <laughs> were in just that position, you know. So, yeah, why, why is a, it? It's not really that big of a deal. Why is it legit when Jesus appears on toast, but it's, it's, it's not considered legit when he's a, when he's a dog's butthole? <laughs> that picture. I know that picture. <laughs> that's not considered a sign of God. <laughs> that's the anti God. He's trying it's to fool you. Dog. Yeah, that's. <laughs> yeah. Only the devil spells things backwards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Devil backwards is Nothing lived. <laughs> Oh, we got our our other partner here in in the studio now. Hey! Do you like Packard Pokeset and want to hear it on demand and on the go? Download the free app today at Stitcher.com. Available on iOS, Android, Nook, and iPad. While we are poking at your news, you can poke us at Facebook and Twitter. Or poke us with an email at ppapodcast at gmail.com. Or leave us a message at 662-709-PPAP. Join us live on YouTube slash Packard Pokeset on Friday nights at 9 p.m. Central Time. Be part of the conversation by live chatting with us during the show. Enjoy the show? Help support us by becoming a monthly patron at patreon.com slash Packard Pokeset. Or look awesome by buying something at cafepress.com slash Packard Pokeset. No money, no problem. You can help us by sharing the show with friends and rate us on iTunes and Stitcher. For everyone that shares and rates us, you kick ass. The Atheists. The Bible. And No Wardrobe, the podcast. Wait a minute. No wardrobe? You mean we're going to be naked while we do this? Well, seeing how I'm an atheist and I'm reading the Bible and since clothes are flammable... Fire! 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 I thought it might be a good idea to take them all off first. (laughs) Naked or not, follow along as we read, analyze, and try to keep you from falling asleep as we go through this boring-ass book. Find us on iTunes, Stitcher, and Spreaker. Who knows? We may even be on YouTube someday.
If you like what we're doing and want to help us keep the lights on, go become a patron at patreon.com forward slash brainstorm podcast. You can hear the bonus half hour that we record every episode and get a shout out when you support the show. Become a patron for just a dollar an episode at patreon.com forward slash brainstorm podcast. Or you can support the show by ordering a t-shirt, mug or other gear from our store at cafepress.ca forward slash brainstorm podcast gear. If you can't afford to become a patron or buy gear, then why not give us a rating or write a review on iTunes or Stitcher? Every rating makes it easier for people to find us. Thanks for your support. We are given one life full of billions of small and large decisions to be somebody, to change, to be kind, to give hope, to become a better person, and to leave a lasting impact on this planet. It is a decision to be made every single day while your heart is still beating. We've made our decision. Absence of clothing. Atheist and science-based apparel and merchandise. Donating 50% of our profits to charity. Look good and feel good, without God. Check us out at absenceofclothing.com and find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest for discount codes and other sweet swag. Use the code BRAINSTORM at absenceofclothing.com and get 10% off. Hey everybody, we're the Utah Outcasts and we want you to listen to our show. We're a rowdy bunch of super liberal atheists that reside in the state of Utah who bring you current events and featured content on a semi-weekly basis. Whether it's us poking fun at the religious right or ranting at the world in which we all reside, we want to borrow your ears for about an hour twice a week. Hey, and don't forget to tell them the best part about it. Oh, yeah. The show's free for all. It is indeed. So if you like free, we're available through iTunes, Overcast, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Spreaker, Google Play, Patreon, and even in full HD video via YouTube. Give us a listen. You won't be sorry. Probably booing at the sausage party I just broke up. <laughs> uh, well, no, we have, no, you're you're not the only female here. We have it over here. A lot of in testosterone studio. in this room. Let's not get carried away. <laughs> <laughs> There's a mediocre amount of testosterone in this room. Yeah. It just went up. <laughs> Two to one. Two it to did one. actually. Women have testosterone too. It's true. I'm not gendering anybody. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. But as a as a, as a relative it. amount, like as a ratio of testosterone to estrogen, it just went down. I'm just saying, like in an absolute sense, but relatively yep. did not. I'm just saying. <laughs> Only if we accept you as a person. Whether you accept me as a person or not, I have <laughs> hormones. What do you want from me? Like, <laughs> like there, a dog came in the room and like, I don't know, or a mouse who would still, anyways, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to make you look foolish. You don't have to. I can do it. <laughs> Um, as soon as we talk, their mics cut out completely, so we have to be a little careful. Yeah, with it's a it's a it's a product of the Google Hangout, so we just kind of kind of watch when everybody's talking. So if that uh, worked the other way, it'd be a benefit because you guys can just talk over <laughs> me. Yeah, our thing is that we interrupt people, so this is like I don't know. It's really bad, actually. It just <laughs> increases that. Type. Trying not to. <laughs> So you folks ready to move on to the next story then? Sure. The Jesus cross one was stupid anyway. <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> yeah. That's right. It was a legit story. It was just stupid. They're all yeah. stupid. No, I agree. I, I agree. All right. Let's move on to our uh, uh, next story here then. <laughs> Now we have to watch the movie again. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen that movie in forever. It's a good one. <laughs> that's, our, that's our bumper there. A uh, new vaccine could make drain the brain immune to heroin and opioids, says a scientist here. A drug overdoses here in the U.S. have feared to have caused more than 60,000 deaths in 2016. But new vaccines that make the brain immune to mind-altering chemicals could be the key to ending the opioid crisis. Now, while we were discussing this story, just trying to find a good story for this this uh, segment here, uh, Connie had some very interesting uh, points on this, actually. So I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing about that. 
Now, it says a combination of the vaccine is, offers protection from those effects, both heroin and the synthetic opiate phenytol is under development by researchers in the U.S., which could one day help curb addiction, even possibly prevent fatal overdoses. Now, the, the thing here about this is I want to point this out that the uh, this is not like when you go to so get a vaccine for something that lasts for like years and years and years. This is like lasts like several months at most. So if you like, say, get into a car accident or something and you need medical attention and you're in severe pain, they will be it, it, it's past that if it's past that time that the the uh, vaccine quote unquote has worn off it will uh, you'll still be able to get the benefits of the opioid or whatever medication that they give you at the doctor's office but if you if you're within that window then you might be a lot of a little bit out of luck at that point well as i've read a little bit more about this uh, they are looking at trying to make this for well, basically heroin and and phenytol Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's it's very much targeting uh, these two, this one or two opioids, um, and I think that I think that the problem that I see with this number one is is that you know you don't know you don't know if maybe in another few months you're not going to need surgery. You're not going to have like uh, if, an example I saw was a, a car wreck, a young man who had actually been addicted to heroin and he did, was obviously not using this drug, but he was using other drugs to um, get off of his addiction. And then he was in a car accident and the doctors were debating about how best to sedate him and treat him afterwards. And they said, well, we'll just go ahead and give him um a turn for him. He'd actually gotten off of the drugs that he was weaning himself off of heroin with uh, a couple about a year before, and um, within about a month of his surgery on his hand. Uh, it's addiction. Okay, addiction is not just about somebody who doesn't have uh, the reasons people become addicted when when they're taking this and they don't actually. You know, have pain are many and varied, and um, I worry about I worry about the way we are demonizing opioids uh, because there's a whole lot of people who have chronic pain who really need these drugs, and um, there's people who take them recreationally, and we want to we need to understand why it is that they're doing it. Right. Uh, I saw a really good TED talk. Uh, for one more one more note, and that was talking about how we are so disconnected in our society, and um, people, you know, whether it's whether it's drugs or it's gambling or cigarettes or alcohol, our di- addictions are a way of insulating ourselves from pain we feel emotionally in life. And uh, uh, so, I guess I just I, I I have a real hard pro- I have a hard time with just you know just saying okay well, let's just have you know. I mean, but, but specifically, this vaccine is supposed to be helping people who are uh, chronically addicted to get off of a drug. And uh, I do understand that after having read the articles, but um, it's still not addressing the reason. It's almost as bad as drug addiction not addressing the reasons why people take drugs. You know, it's just like, well, let's just treat treat this because this is a bad thing. And I don't know. Um well, to, I'm going to throw it open. Here. Sorry, I to, dominated. To that. counter that, no, no, that's cool. That's cool. To counter what, the last part that you just said, yes, people focus on the drug itself and how to stop the addiction or whatever, but there are people focusing on the other part of it too. They're they're separate. They don't work on it on, on both, right? So you have somebody working on the actual addiction side of it, the actual physiology, the actual chemical interaction of the drug in your brain and how to break addiction. And then you have people working on the social side of it and, and the reasons and stuff like that. But my three biggest things is, number one, my fav- one of my favorite quotes from my favorite movie is, life is pain, princess. <laughs> Which movie? Hmm? Princess Bride. Oh, oh, that's right. That's, right. that's, right. that's, what, I right. that's what I thought. Anybody yeah. who tells you is, is selling you something. Exactly. Yes. Um, exactly. <clears throat> with, as far as a vaccine, uh, there are other types of painkillers besides opioids that are just as effective, uh, just somewhere harder to uh, acquire, synthesize, or use on some people. And I don't know if I'd want a vaccine for that addiction, because let's say I'm addicted to heroin. 
Is it really fair that I have to have autism too? Because of the vaccine? Because of the vaccine. That's very funny. Like, they, he's making a joke, uh, but he sucks. That's, sorry, guys. <laughs> We're sorry I'm for you Gumby. cleared it up. <laughs> yeah, I, I've heard this, I have this conversation where he's like, hey, it's a vaccine to give you autism. <laughs> <laughs> those, people are, those people are fucking lunatics. There, there. I don't see the problem. I don't see the problem because if, if you're addicted to heroin, it's going to kill you. If you can take this vaccine and it helps remove your addiction over, even if it's six months and you can get clean, then, yeah, if you get into a car accident, they can put you on a local. They could put you in fucking in a coma. You're still not dead. That's, yeah, for most things, I guess. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, well, the problem um, is, I mean. Thing. No, go ahead. Go ahead, Matt. Hi, Matt. The uh, and if they're on this drug and you know, and it's only six months or however long it is, you know, you can still have the the cravings for it. Mm-hmm. I mean, heroin's highly, highly addictive. I know somebody that uh, whose daughter is a heroin addict, and she uh, went on some drug to uh, counteract the heroin, and it didn't even work. So I, I think you know it's case by case basis. Yeah, I would say that the, it's, it, it depends on the person's physiology. I mean, e- right. even in some, in let's say, all right. Most vaccines work for most people. There are always going to be some people that when they come, when they get the vaccine for whatever it is, they are actually allergic to it for whatever reason. They're just, their physiology is just says, Hey, I don't like this. Get it away from me. And it has a reaction. Well, they're calling it a vaccine, but I believe the way it works is it's actually a receptor inhibitor. Is that right? Yeah. I, I, what they're calling it is a vaccine, but yeah. it's that might actually be a, a more uh, descript apt of it is a vac is a uh, 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 what you said there. <laughs> yeah, it, it inhibits it the receptor. Yes, inhibitor for or the receptors. Yes, in cancer care we call that targeted a targeted therapy. Targeted therapy. Yeah, I don't know if you do that. Yeah, in that pain. was the word. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it says here the antibody binds to the drug, so the drug can't get to its target. Basically, it, it uh, prevents it from crossing the blood-brain barrier for up to eight months. So, yeah, that would have but, to that would have to definitely be something that would be uh, the pain receptor, or the receptor to, to block it, the, the block the receptor. Yeah. Right. So, a person who's in chronic and, pain uh, again, would have to have something are, else to manage that, uh, right? It's all. We're the only two. Everybody start right. talking Go on ahead. top of each other again. Sorry. I apologize. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, we're Canadians. We apologize. <laughs> Don't take that from us. <laughs> she's she's from Washington State. She is oh she she is honorary Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> My family came down from Canada. So. Oh, you're a traitor. <laughs> 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 well, she's in the right state to she's in she's in Washington to burn it down. Like you guys did to us back in 1812. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Burn Vancouver, Can you do that again, Vancouver, fuck it, uh, you know, sorry. <laughs> well, we are technically still British, so, yeah. <laughs> oh, damn. Well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just thinking uh, that uh, if if they have this inhibitor and they – are still in chronic pain, then they do have to find something else to manage that pain. Like, I don't know. You know, this kind of, this whole, this whole, I don't know, approach to, to, to uh, drug addiction control reminds me of, um, kind of a general approach that is, I've heard advocated, um, whenever you want to do something good, you should, you should make a decision and then allow that decision to occur in an automated way. So you don't have to keep making that decision over and over again. Like if you want to start donating to charity, um, you think it's really important rather than having to actually go and give 10 bucks a month, better to automate it and just make it happen every time. So like this kind of reminds me of the same thing. Like as a drug addict, like I would imagine there's a point where you're like, fuck, why did I do this? Why did I take this <laughs> dr- medication? Like I want, I want hair, you know, you're a drug addict and that you, you want <laughs> right. this to cope with whatever's 
whatever, for whatever reason you take it. Um, but, but you can. So you, so it's kind of seems like a positive thing to like, you take it every, whatever it is, three months, six months, and, and then you can make that positive decision once and allow it to like percolate through your life and, and force yourself in that sense. It's what interesting, if, interesting approach. So how big is this dosage for this vaccine? Cause if there could be a micro dose, if you can associate that with every time you use, and only so then it only lasts for a few days, right? But it, I would think that wouldn't be effective, right? Because you're going to make the the shitty decision, right? Like like I just don't the buy the ice cream, does. right? So that when I at midnight when I'm craving ice cream, I can't eat it, right? Whereas like, you know what I mean? Like addiction if, if doesn't I, work that way though. Well, but in a sense, it would because if if it was ice short term, right? It would be like oh well, I could take the heroin or I could take the inhibitor. <laughs> and at a point when you're where you're triggered to, to be to be craving the drug, you'd think you'd be like, "Fuck the inhibitor! I want the drug." Yeah, right? Always be going. No, that's what I'm saying. Microdose it with the drug. Are you talking time. about like like freaking narcotic vaccine homeopathy? Like, are you diluting it down to like? Is that what you're advocating? No, it's, it's, it's changing the dose. <laughs> See, my it's joke was funny. Your joke sucked. <laughs> changing the dosage. It, it does. The article does not say what the dosage is. It's probably you know closely guarded secret or something. You know, based because it hasn't been tried in humans right now. I think they have even done it in uh, mice and rhesus monkeys. What it says here. So right. The, the thing with heroin is you can become addicted using it once. It's mm. really it's, it's heinous. I've heard, I've heard that. It is heinous. Yeah. I've never seen an example. Of it, though. Have you tried? <laughs> Just saying. Heroin? No. If you wanted to know. No. If you wanted to know if it the could be done, thing, you could try. The closest thing to heroin for me is is this particular potato chip dip. And once I get it in the house, it's just gone. It's just gone. Yeah, that's like me and Hagen does. For sure. <laughs> there you go. Here you. <laughs> yeah. You know, this is really like a disservice to like actual hardcore drug addicts. We're like, my addiction to ice cream and j- dip true. is pretty much the same as your addiction to hardcore drugs. Pretty much. <laughs> it absolutely is. I can't imagine the number of times I found myself just strung out in the in the ice cream aisle. For sure. It happens. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, tons of tons of half gallons just laying everywhere in a coma. <laughs> so true. <laughs> it pops to a So walk in there with the ice cream scoop. <laughs> so so here's a social thing it it's okay for us to laugh at heroin addicts <laughs> but not poor people it's not actually it's not we we're oh doing it's not it. no. shit, <laughs> shit. <laughs> we're doing it it's not okay it's just dark humor <laughs> i know tons of addicts i think they'd laugh <laughs> like like half my friends are black right like we can make fun of them right like, <laughs> it's a joke it's a joke <laughs> I don't have any black friends. <laughs> 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 well, you're Canadian. That's like so you're in Canada. You're out of focus, so. In Canada, we don't see color because there's always blizzards and we just don't see. <laughs> or, or clouds and mosquitoes. I was just say, everything, there, everything there is always white because it's always a snowstorm. In, just, in a snowstorm, everybody looks the same. <laughs> <laughs> we're not white supremacists. We're just stuck. <laughs> Oh, and and in the winter time, you get you've got that that uh, the, you know eight months of winter, you know, eight months of darkness are up there. You know, <laughs> yeah. or am I thinking of Alaska? <laughs> yeah, that's a little further north than even us. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. Uh, do- <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's better with me here, right? It's better, right? It it, it's a little a little edgier, though. Sorry. No. Yeah, well, we like edge here. Sometimes we're about as we're about as edgy as a bowling ball. <laughs> I apologize. I feel like we're not letting Tom and Matt get any a word in edgewise here. I'm not sure they can. I'm sure they're trying. I, I'm sure they're trying. Matt or Tom. Tom just got back. Tom, can you did you did you fix your audio issues? No, it's. Still, my my bandwidth for whatever reason is super low. Oh, so I'm getting very choppy. Oh, I'm sorry, Tom. <laughs> Connie, you can hear me, all right? Though, can you? Oh yeah, I can. Okay, I can, I just I can hear you. I'm good. I had people in the house who were 
talking. I just muted myself a little bit. Okay. Well, then it, it's got to be it's got to be something on Tom's end. It, I, I blame the hurricane. Well, half your country is flooded and has a tropical storm, right? So. Yeah. Is yeah. Texas it, it, half yeah, like, like half the country? Only in the middle. What? What's that? What's that, Gumby? <laughs> Isn't Texas like half of the country? Yeah, Texas is half the country. Yeah, <laughs> it's that's what they tell me every time I talk. I make. I make it, the, 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 I'm so inappropriate. The the lower half is Texas, and everything else is you know, uh, uh, us Yanks. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Fuck Alabama. Everything right? else. Everything else is Delaware. <laughs> <laughs> what did Delaware? It's either Delaware or Wisconsin. There are no other states. <laughs> oh, well, 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 besides Washington, it's Washington, Wisconsin, and Delaware. There, nowhere else okay, exists. But, but everybody, you say Washington, and everybody thinks, "Oh, D.C." I'm like, no. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> that is confusing. Oh, Marvel. That. Is, that is confusing as hell. It should be. It, you should. We should have a different. Uh, we should call Washington D.C. something different. Just call it D.C. Yeah, yeah there's D.C. <laughs> and then there's Seattle, anywhere. right? <laughs> yeah. Call it Hellhole. Hellhole. <laughs> Just call the other one Marvel. Oh, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was... swamp. You're on fire with the bad I jokes know. tonight, eh? Nobody <laughs> gets till you read them a couple of times. <laughs> 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 oh shit <laughs> so what do you think all right well do you oh, I was gonna everybody say, talks you to your uh... <laughs> <laughs> everybody talks at once and then nobody talks and then everybody talks at once again <laughs> jesus oh I, that air is sober. That, I love that, that air. It's it just, ooh, suck. It, it's so good. We are professionals want- here. Wait a minute. Let me, let me get my notebook here. Commercial. We're professionals. I'm going to write this down. We're professionals. Okay. Yes. I'm not getting my notes. <laughs> In what sense are we professionals? We didn't go to school for this. We don't get paid for this. Like, we yeah. suck at it. I mean- <laughs> Wait. Wait. I was getting paid? All right. I got to write this down. Where, where is paid? That's the definition of a professional. Yeah, I, for yourself. I, I, I'm pretty sure it's not us. Dave's a professional. Dave yes, yes, yes. I try. Yeah. Dave, Dave's on sound. <laughs> Dave's on sound. That's I, don't, right. I, I don't exist in their space. <laughs> He's not here, man. Where'd that voice come from? <laughs> it's unexplainable. He's from an orthogonal vector space. <laughs> He's actually living outside a wormhole or something. He's just in the mm. corner, you know, another dimension. It's just like Interstellar. Oh, I love that movie. <laughs> He's like the square root of negative neg- of uh, negative one hundred. I-, I talk through the bookshelf in there. He's a solid I ten. He's imaginary. <laughs> Dave's in the bookshelf. <laughs> well, this this went to shit because I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Well. What can you do? Maybe I had my expectations up because I missed the last two episodes. <laughs> Wait, this is good. This is a good thing for me to do. I should go do this. It's good. People like it. Well, like I said, we man, had a we had a couple. Go ahead. We had a couple comments from a chat room here. Um, and, and hello, uh, real Paul Marshall. He's from uh, he says Alabama. Okay, Alabama's okay with us. And um, it's Ranger. He's he's usually with us, but uh, he's he didn't have access to Skype. So he's uh, he's in our chat room tonight. He says uh, not really offended. He lives in Vermont now. So Vermont, you know, Vermont lives uh, is out, out there. So <laughs> <laughs> I thought they became part of Mexico in 1847. Vermont. So what? <laughs> I don't know. Oh no, that's where all the money is. That's right. Yeah, we keep our money in Vermont with the other maple syrup that you can't have. <laughs> Do we have another topic? Did you want to uh, liquid gold? Liquid gold. Did you want to do the uh, your outro then? Because yeah, we're right uh, at the top of the hour. Let's let's take a break. Uh, to those listening live or to our patrons, this is where we'll take our break. Uh, for regular feed subscribers, this is where we'll start playing the outro. Dave, do we have some outro music? 
Oh, yeah. All right. Let's do our outro music and then we'll start getting going here. Sure. So for us, you can check out our show notes at thebrainstormpodcast.com and our website, brainstormblog.net. Uh, thanks to our financial supporters on Patreon, Will, Lisa, Rob, Aaron, Nathan, Daryl, Stephanie, Positively Skeptical, Michael, Lachlan, Magnus, and Alden. You can join us live every second week when we broadcast live on Spreaker. You can find us at spreaker.com slash user slash brainstorm podcast. Our next guest is Matt Dillahunty, everyone's favorite atheist debater. So prepare to, so prepare to feel <laughs> dumb. Oh, I'm ready. I've, I've, <laughs> he's made me feel dumb before. Yes, so. that's right. Thank you to the Packard Pokes at crew. We really appreciate it. Sure. And uh, we will be back on Wednesday at uh, 5 p.m. Central Time. So just look for us there We're for our half hour show. And then uh, this half of the show will be up on Friday. So <laughs> because, uh, uh, I, during the uh, time we were setting all this up, there was a death in my family, so there will not be a show Friday. A li- there will not be a live show on Friday, but there will be, if you're not watching this live, you'll get to see this then. So. <laughs> Perfect. So I'll post links to your guys' show in our notes on uh, the brainstormpodcast.com and brainstormblog.net when I finally get around to updating our actual website. <laughs> so thanks to Dave for our intro music. Thanks to Alex Kepper Murdoch for doing sure. the voiceover for the intro and for some of our ads. Thanks to Jason Camo for outro music. You can find his stuff at loststateofmind.com. Thank you f- to Packard for comp- uh, combining all our intro music and all the ads and everything so that it all played out smoothly. All music played is either with permission or under the SoCan license to play. For more information on SoCan, you can check out the music license info page on our website, brainstormblog.net. I think that's everything. So give us a rating, a thumbs up, or a fave on your favorite podcatcher of choice. Uh, Join us on Facebook. Join our Facebook group. Like our page. Follow us on Twitter. Share the show and spread the word. And definitely share in all the places because we've uh, dropped off a little bit this month for listeners. So thanks for listening. And remember, the truth matters. This is an opinion-based podcast. Each person on the podcast is responsible for their own opinions, and those opinions don't necessarily reflect the views of the rest of the panel. Any guests or anyone associated with the people on the podcast, such as spouses, partners, children, other family members, friends, or employers. No one person speaks for the podcast, with the possible exception of Corey, and he doesn't speak for anyone else on the show. The Brainstorm podcast does not represent the views of our sponsors. We just wanted to say thanks to everyone who listens to us, shares the show, gives us a rating on iTunes or Stitcher, or supports us through Patreon and Gumroad. We don't have a lot of interaction with our listeners, but what we have had proves that we attract some of the best people around. Smart, kind, and cool. An audience truly worthy of the titles Hardcore and Woo Free. Thanks for helping us make the world a smarter place. So I guess the, the person who, oh, I can't hear myself there. <laughs> the person who tweeted this. Oh, we lost Corey. Oh, Corey, there we go. Corey, you muted yourself. There we go. Is that better? Yeah, better. <laughs> that was probably supposed to be my mic. <laughs> the person. Hey, this wouldn't be, this would not be Packard Pokes that without technical difficulties. We made a staple of that. Were, were you unplugging your mic? Is that what you were doing? Yeah. Oh. The, the mic was coming unplugged. Oh, well, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. That's probably a good idea. Yeah. It's uh technical difficulties are a product of live broadca- podcasting. Wait a minute. This is live. Wait a minute. No one told me this. I was going to up for that. You're wearing a shirt. <laughs> Oh, shit, I am. Oh, I, thought we I, were, I thought we agreed on no shirts. <laughs> That's Tuesdays. <laughs>
Ja. Bra booing. <laughs> and uh, we'll be back in five minutes for live listeners. Give or take a few minutes. Give or, or take. Two seconds. <laughs> yeah. Four, four thirty more like. <laughs> I should have some right. elevator Before music playing right now. Oops. All right. I will play the outro. Everybody that's listening live, we are not going anywhere. Please stick around. Uh, we are going to be recording for uh, a little while, quite a while is longer. Anyway, maybe another hour or two. So stick around. Uh, so when you hear the outro uh, and the uh, and the commercial, just kind of play, uh, stick with us here. Uh, actually, I'm going to play the commercial. Uh, uh, did you want to play the commercial? Or do you want to play the outro? <laughs> if you want to do the outro and then the commercials, oh, well, that's fine. I'll do the. That's fine. I'll do that then. All right, well, the commercial, yeah, all right, I'll do the outro and then the commercial. Perfect.